Welcome back to our session. So today we are going to discuss about DNA replication. Let's have a small introduction about the replication. So this replication, uh, which is nothing but it's a duplication process, which is going to copy something. Okay, that is called replication. So here is the definition. Replication is a duplication process requiring copying from a template okay so after the completion of this replication each dna molecule could have one parental and one newly synthesized strand of the dna you know so for example let me tell the process in the, in a simple way so this is the dna right so now the dna is going to undergo replication process so now this stands will get separated and here let me change the color of the new stand. So, the new stands are formed. So, this process is called replication. At the end of the replication, so one stand will be parental and another stand will be newly formed stand. Right. So, this is termed as semi-conservative DNA replication semi-conservative DNA replication. Now, if we take this replication in the eukaryotes, eukaryotic organism, this replication is going to take place in the nucleus obviously, right? So, during S phase of the cell cycle, we have already know about it, right? So, in the cell cycle, we have uh, three phases, right? So, actually two phases that is interphase and uh, M phase. So, in the interphase, there are three phases that is G1, S and G2, right? So, in this S phase, this replication is going to happen in the eukaryotic cells, okay? Now, coming to the prokaryotes, it does not have a true nucleus, right? So, this replication is going to take place in the cytoplasm itself okay so actually this uh, dna replication is a uh, little bit complex okay and also it consists of uh, multi-step okay and also it involves uh, many enzymes protein factors methyl ions okay so it will be a little bit tedious so if you understand it will be very very easy okay you have to understand the names and its function okay yes Let's get into the mechanism of DNA replication. So, totally there are seven steps. So, the first thing is origin of replication. Now, we know what is replication, right? So, it is going to happen in the DNA, okay? So, there should be some particular spot to start this replication process, right? So, that is called origin of replication. So, this is also called as OD, right? So, the first point, replication begins at a particular spot, which is called ORI. So, uh, if we take this uh, bacterial uh, viral DNA and all, it has only on ORI region. Got it? So, in bacteria, viruses, the DNA has single ORI region. Okay. So, this is called as single replicating unit or replicon. So, what about in the eukaryotic? So, in the eukaryotic DNA, there will be multiple number of uh, ORI region, you know, which means several replicating unit is present in the eukaryotic DNA. Okay. So, it consists of several replicating unit it is also called replicons that is multi replicanic it is also called as multi replicanic because this eukaryotic dna will have many number of ori region so if there is many number of ori region this replication can start in any of the ori region right so, but in the bacteria or in the viruses, there will be only one ORI region. Fine. 
So what happens if there is no Mori region? Yes, obviously the replication does not going to happen if the DNA does not consist of Mori region. So absence of Mori replication will not occur. So we are clear about this first step, right? That is origin of replication. So this origin of replication is also called as Ori, which is a beginning spot of the replication process. So in the bacteria and the viruses, there will be single Ori, and in the eukaryotic, there will be multi-repliconic. It consists of many replicating uric. So if there is the absence of Ori region, the replication does not going to happen. So this is all about first step. Clear, right? Our second step is about activation of deoxyribonucleotides. Uh, so already we know about what is deoxyribonucleotides. Okay. So now uh, this activation of this deoxyribonucleotides is going to happen in the nucleoplasm. Okay. So the first first point is about takes place in nucleoplasm, right? So we know what is nucleoplasm. So there is a cell. So inside the cell nucleus will be there. So inside the nucleus there will be the nucleoplasm, right? So it is the region present inside the nucleus, right? Okay. So here there will be four types of molecules will be there, which means deoxy adenosine monophosphate. Fine. So this is called as Deoxy adenosine monophosphate. Right. So we know that uh, base pairs, right? Adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine, right? Which is attached to the sugar with the phosphate group is called as deoxyribonucleotides. Okay. Now let me draw this uh, adenosine. Okay. So this is the adenosine, okay, so it is the double ring molecule, so with this sugar is attached with the phosphate group, okay. So this whole molecule is called as deoxy adenosine monophosphate, clear? So this is one type, okay, so here adenine is attached okay so there are another three molecules is there what is that guanine cytosine and thymine right yes we'll write it so there will be another molecule deoxy guanosine monophosphate okay and then we'll write this deoxy guanosine monophosphate and the next molecule is DCMP. Okay. This is deoxycytidine monophosphate. Okay. Last molecule is DTMP. That is deoxythymidine monophosphate. So, just see this diagram DAMP. So, here adenine is attached. So, if adenine, in the case of adenine, if the guanine is present, then it is called as deoxyguanosine monophosphate. If there is cytidine is present, then it is called as deoxycytidine monophosphate. When there is thymine is present, then it is called as a deoxythymidine monophosphate. Clear? So these are the deoxyribonucleotides present in the nucleoplasm. Fine. So actually, this molecules should get uh, phosphorylated, you know. So, there should be addition of phosphate group because for the activation to get energy, to get extra energy, okay. Now, the third step is about, so first this molecule will get phosphorylated and changed to active form. So, the heading itself is an activation, right? So, now it is going to get into the activation form when it is get 
phosphorylated okay so here comes a very important enzyme called enzyme phosphorylase so let me uh, take one molecule here okay i'll take this deoxyadenosine monophosphate so this DAMP okay so I'm adding this phosphoric acid for the phosphorylation okay so in the presence of enzyme called phosphorylase with the energy now this molecule is get converted into deoxyadenosine triphosphate okay so the same like that of other molecules also. So if there is DGMP, I'll be getting DGTP and then DCTP, and then DTTP, right? So all the stuff are phosphorylated nucleotides. Fine. So now this is the deoxy ribo nucleotide triphosphate okay now we got this phosphorylated nucleotides so which will be acting as a substrate in the replication process and they provide energy obviously right for the polymerization reaction going to happen in the further steps right so here in the second step that is activation of deoxyribonucleotides so it is going to take place in the nucleoplasm so these are the four uh, types of deoxyribonucleotides, right? So nothing is there. So D stands for deoxy, A for adenosine and MP for monophosphate. That's it, okay? So this four molecules uh, is going to add with the phosphoric acid in the presence of enzyme called phosphorylase with the energy. It is going to form uh, deoxyribonucleotide triphosphate. Fine, that's it. Now let's enter into the next process. Yes, our next step is about exposure of parent DNA stand. Okay, so here what is going to happen? The DNA will be uh, like this, right? Now this winding should get unwind. Okay, it is super coiled, right? It has consist of many loops. It should uncoiled like this, right? So, here comes the enzyme called enzyme helicase. It is also called as unwindings. Okay, so this enzyme will act on the oocyte, right? So, this will act on oocyte and unwind the two strands of DNA by destroying the hydrogen bonds. Okay, so this both it will unwind the two strands of DNA by destroying hydrogen bonds. Right, we know. So this uh, nitrogen basis will help together with the help of the hydrogen bonds. So for example, if you take A here, uh, T is here, so there will be two hydrogen bonds, right? So this hydrogen bonds will hold these two stands. So this hydrogen bonds should get destroyed. So if it destroyed, we can unwind the DNA. Clear? So when it gets unwinded, this DNA will form a Y-shaped structure. Look at here. So now here the helicase is acting. Okay. Now, so now it is unbinded like this. So you can see how it is looks like. So it is like Y shaped, right? So Y shaped structure. Okay. Which is also called as replication fork. So after this, it will form the replication fork. Or we can call it as a Y fork. Fine. Now uh, the DNA got separated. Fine. So this separated stance should be stabilized, right? 
So now it is separated. It should be stabilized, right? So for the stabilization process, okay. So these exposed single strands are stabilized with the help of single standard binding proteins. So here comes the other protein called single strand binding proteins which is also called as SSDP. So let me draw this uh, protein. Let me have this mm, yellow color. Yeah. Yes. So these are the single standard binding proteins which is used for the stabilization of the DNA strand. Okay. DNA separated strands. This is the one thing. So now here comes the next uh, enzyme called topoisomerase. So why this guy is coming? Actually the DNA is already in the twisted form, right? It is super coiled. So when it gets separated in one side, so the other side will be in the tension, you know. Due to unwinding, a super coiling gets developed on the end of the DNA opposite to replicating fork. Okay, so this is the opposite side. So this is the replicating fork. This side is the replication fork side. So in the opposite side of this, so there will be the tension, you know. So this tension is released by the enzyme called topoisomerase. Now let me draw the topoisomerase here. I'll have this green color. Yes. You know? So this is the topoisomerase. So here, mainly there are four points. So here comes the first enzyme called enzyme helicase, which is used to unwind the DNA. Okay, it is already twisted over. So we have to unwind this for the replication process. So this helicase will uh, start from the ori site, right? So this is the starting region of the replication process. So now this helicase will act on this ori site and it will start unwinding the stand. Okay, so there will be two stands in the DNA. So this two stands will get unwinded. So if it gets unwinded, it will form a Y shape. Right, which is called as a replication fork or Y fork. Okay, so when this two stands get uh, separated, it should be stabilized for the replication process. Right, so if it is not stable, the replication does not going to happen. So for stabilization, here comes a protein called single standard binding proteins. Okay, this will help out for the stabilization of the DNA stands. Fine, so then when the unwinding has happened in the replication fork side, in the opposite side, there, there will be a lot of tension is created between the two stands. Okay. So, to release from the tension, there is an enzyme called topoisomerase. Fine. So, in the prokaryotic, so in the prokaryotic organism, there is an enzyme called DNA gyrase. Okay. So, this will act as a uh, topoisomerase enzyme. So, which has the activity of topoisomerase. So, this is all about exposure of parent DNA start. We will get into the next process. So, it is formation of RNA primer. Actually, it is not DNA. It is RNA. Right. So, formation of the RNA primer. So, let me draw the stance first. Yeah. So consider this is 3 dash to 5 dash n and this is 5 dash to 3 dash n. Okay. So now there will be enzyme called RNA polymerase or primase. RNA polymerase or RNA primase. Okay. So at the uh, free end, 3 dash end, you know, so here, here and fork end of the second stand, okay. So this is the 
folk star. So here, a small strand of RNA is synthesized. So this RNA is synthesized with the help of DNA dependent enzyme called RNA polymerase. This synthesis RNA is called RNA primer. So it consists of about 4 to 12 nucleotide. Here, so it functions as the 5 dash end of the new stand. Fine. So this RNA primer is synthesized by the enzyme called which is a DNA dependent enzyme called RNA polymerase or it is called as a RNA primase. So this enzyme will synthesize a 4 to 12 nucleotide okay which is called as a RNA primer. Clear? So this will be synthesizing the new stand in the replication process. So the next thing is about base pairing. So we know about base pairing, right? So the two separated stand in the area of replication fork, it function as their nitrogen bases. So let me write it so that you can understand it easily. So th there will be the complementary phosphorylated nucleotides, right? For example, if there is DATP, so now here it is A, okay? It will be binding with the thymine. If it is, it will be binding with A. If it is C, it is going to bind with G. If it is G, then it is going to bind with C. Right? So now these molecules have to build a hydrogen bond, right? It needs some energy also. Fine. Actually, it is triphosphate. It consists of lot of energy. Okay, so this energy is mainly to build the hydrogen bonds for the base pair, right? So here comes an interesting enzyme called enzyme pyrophosphate. Enzyme pyrophosphatase. So this enzyme pyrophosphatase removes two phosphate from this phosphorylated nucleotide. So these are the phosphorylated already, we know that, right? So in the activation of deoxyribonucleotide, this molecules get phosphorylated, okay? So this deoxyribonucleotides uh, are phosphorylated into triphosphate, right? Nucleotide. This will change them into monophosphate state, right? So now here are the molecules DATP and GTP and CTP and TTP. So now, so in the presence of this enzyme, pyrophosphatase, it will be converted into monophosphate again. Okay, with the release of some energy also. So it's a phosphate, right? So two phosphate is removed. Now it consists of only monophosphate. So other molecules. GMP to PI plus energy and again CMP plus 2 phosphate plus energy and TMP plus energy. Okay, so this base pairing is quite opposite to the second step that is activation of deoxyribonucleotide. So there, uh, this molecules get phosphorylated. So here, with the help of this pyrophosphatase, these molecules again converted into monophosphate with the energy. So we are getting energy here. Okay, so we are getting energy here because to make hydrogen bonds, right? So now the new stand is going to form. Fine. So these nucleotides are already present in the nucleoplasm inside the cell. Okay, so now this get monophosphated. Okay, to get some energy for the formation of hydrogen bonds on the new start. Okay, so this is all about base pairing. The next step is about, it's a very, very, very important step. Okay, so the new stand formation. Fine, so for the formation of the new stand, so there is a very, very, very important enzyme called 
DNA polymerase. So this DNA polymerase in the presence of uh, uh, magnesium ions, ATP and also thymine uh, pyrophosphate, okay, it will uh, attach the nitrogen bases, okay, this will attract, attach the nitrogen bases of each template DNA, okay, it will establish the phosphodiester bond and it get linked to form replicated DNA start. So actually with this magnesium ions and ATP and enozyme pyrophosphate, so this enzyme will attach the nucleotides in the template stand to form the new stand. Clear? So as this replication proceeds, new areas of parent DNA duplex and bind and separate so that uh, replication proceeds rapidly, you know. So have this, okay, so this is the, so this is y dash, 3 dash and 3 dash, 5 dash. So here the RNA primer is there, okay, here the other RNA primer is get attached. So when this forms a stand, okay, so from the RNA primer, so here DNA polymerase is going to attach here and it will start synthesizing the new stand, okay. So when this starts synthesizing, okay, the gap will be filled with the complementary nucleotide by, me on, by means of this DNA polymerase, okay. So actually, We'll have a clear diagram of this. So let me have the overall uh, process. So now you have to be very clear. So this is the first step. Okay. So now this is the phi dash, three dash, three dash, and phi dash. Clear. So this was unwinded by the enzyme called helicase right so now it gets unbinded so here there will be a, another enzyme called topohyzomerase to reduce the tension fine and also there will be the protein right so what is that single standard binding protein that is SSBP to stabilize the unbinded stance, right. So now it is Y shaped which is called as a replication fork, fine. So these two stands are parental DNA double helix, so which is the parent DNA, DNA double helix, fine. So we know all the stuffs, so now let me draw another thing. So I am going to make this fork little big. So this helicase enzyme is uh, unwinding the DNA very fastly. Okay. Now here, so again this is a dash. Here, only in the 3 dash side, this RNA primer will be formed. So we know how this RNA primer is formed, not only in this stand and also in this stand. So I told you that this RNA primer will be always going and attaching with the 3 dash N and it will start producing the new stands uh, only in the side of 5 dash side, okay. So now this will be going this side, this will be coming this side, clear. So now this new stand, now here the one stand is going to form this side, right. So this stand is called leading stand and this stand, okay, this is called lagging stand. So here, see the stand, so why it is called as a leading stand? Because, so this polarity is 3 dash to 5 dash, right? Now it is going to form new 5 dash shape, okay? So its complementary stand continuous, right? So if one primer is get attached, it is going to form continuously. 
so there is no uh, block or uh, it is not going to stop anywhere here so that's why it is called as a leading stand fine so now look at this lagging stand so here uh, what is going to happen there will be lot of rna primer will get attached simultaneously when the helicase is unwinding okay so now all this rna primers will be forming a new stand okay so there will be short short uh, stands okay so it it is not continuous there will be some gaps between that so that's why it is called as a lagging stands so this short short segments is called as a okasagi fragments so this short segments is called as okasagi fragments we know why it is called as a leading stand and why it is called as a lagging stand so this leading stand will be forming the new stand continuously but the lagging stand has short short segments of dna okay so that's why it is called as a lagging stand it is not continuous right so an rna primer is also required every time a new okasaki fragment is to to be built you know so so now this is a okasaki one of the okasaki fragment and this is one fragment and this is one fragment right in all this fragments there is a rna primer okay so this after replacing the rna primer uh, with this deoxyribonucleotide this okasaki fragments are joined together okay so this okasaki fragments are joined together by an enzyme called dna ligase so this is one of the important enzyme okay so this is the enzyme is used to join the okasaki fragments okay let me draw here so now so this is the okasaki fragment fine so this is joined by the enzyme ligase fine so now when the ligase is formed so that will be a continuous stand fine so this is d dash phi dash in and now this is phi dash d dash and is formed here and this is phi dash 3 dash and here phi dash 3 dash right this and this is a new strand right so this is the parental stand and this is also a parental stand okay fine so when we take these two these two are the daughter dna double stranded so actually it is a daughter dna okay so this is the overall direction of this replication so here uh, we know how this new stands or form with the help of lot of enzymes like helicase double stranded binding proteins and rna primer and ligase to poisomerase okay so this is the overall process of the replication it's very simple right last and final step is about proofreading okay so this proofreading is like to check okay so there may be a wrong base is uh, introduced during the replication okay so this uh, dna polymerase itself has the sense to find out the wrong uh, base pairs polymerase itself uh has the ability to check the wrong base pairs uh when this dna polymerase is going to synthesis that full stand so if it had some doubt okay it will goes back and it will remove the wrong bases so after removing the wrong bases so it will add the proper base and then proceeds okay and it finally moves forwarding for example so so now this is uh dna polymerase is here okay it is uh, synthesizing a new stand so if it is a here if it is c here okay now this uh, replication process goes here now it can sense this that so here it should come t right so it will remove the c and it will attach the t here fine so such uh, mismatching is also get corrected by itself right 
So this DNA polymerase removes the mismatched or wrong nucleotides if present, you know, and synthesis is a correct replacement by using the intact stand as template. Fine. So after proofreading, okay, so that the newly formed segment is what is the newly formed segment? The new stands, right? So the new stands are there. So this new segment is sealed by the DNA ligase. So new newly formed segment is sealed by DNA ligase. So we have uh, spoke about DNA polymerase and DNA ligase in this proofread. Okay, this is all about mechanism of DNA replication. Fine.